All right, I want to ask you a question. How much do you think that you think that you think? You ever thought about that? All right, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. You're waking up today and your mind is being consumed with thoughts. I want you to ask yourself the question, what am I thinking about today? Because the answer to that question is crucial because the thoughts that you think today will determine your happiness. If you're going about your day today thinking, well, I just don't like this person. I'm ticked off because of this reason. I'm ticked off because of that reason. You're probably going to have a negative outlook throughout the rest of your day. However, if you wake up thinking, I'm very grateful that I woke up in a house. I'm grateful that I have a job. I'm grateful that I have a family, I have friends, whatever it is. If you begin your day like that, you will more than likely have a better outlook on the rest of your day. The truth of the matter is that the way that we think matters. So do you ever think to yourself... How much do I think? What do I think? The Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians understood that the temptation to think negative thoughts is real. The temptation to become anxious is real. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, 4 to 6, let's start in verse 4. He says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your forbearing spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So verse 4. The Apostle Paul tells the Philippian church to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, he I say rejoice, he says, because the Lord is near. This is something that you have to work on. If you are not rejoicing in the Lord Jesus Christ every day and instead are walking around in guilt, walking around with negative thinking, that is because your mind is not set on the right things. It is easy to let things dictate the way that we feel. It is easy to get caught up in what happened yesterday or a month ago or a year ago. It is easy to allow ourselves to become distracted. But the Apostle Paul says that we are to rejoice always because the Lord is near. And keep in mind, this is coming from a guy who is in jail. He is in a Roman prison cell and he's telling people, don't be anxious, don't worry. Instead, pray. Pray about everything. So I want you to begin your day praying about the way that you think. God, help us to think correctly, to think biblically. When it comes to who we are in your sight, as a child of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, we are saved. We are purified. We are sanctified. We are accepted, regardless of all of our flaws. Regardless of how many times we mess up, we are 100% forgiven. We are accepted by you. Some people have a hard time at believing that. But that's what the scriptures teach us. Because we might think that something that we have done in the past or something that we really don't want to do or might find ourselves doing in the future, that this will somehow negate God's love for us. This will somehow cancel out what Christ has done for us. The great thing about this is that our acceptance, God's acceptance of us, is based solely on Jesus Christ. 
Our salvation comes by grace through faith apart from our works, period. It has nothing to do with our works. It has everything to do with Jesus Christ. We must place our faith in him. But anyway, not to get off topic, the way that we think matters a lot. Now, in, in Romans chapter 12, the Apostle Paul, the writer of the letter to the Romans, has this to say. Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Verse 2, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I want to say that again. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what the will of God is that which is good and acceptable and perfect. The Apostle Paul is writing to Christians, and he says, by the mercies of God, with the mercies of God in view. This is a, something that you have to think about. Thinking about God's mercies, His mercy upon you. While thinking of His mercy, let that drive you to present your body your members, your feet, your tongue, your hands, what you do, what you say, the way you walk throughout your day, to present those things as a living and holy sacrifice, that which is acceptable to God. This is our spiritual service of worship. Verse 2, he says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It is so easy for Christians to get caught up in the world and to let our way of thinking be influenced by the world around us. But that is not God's will for us. We all have many areas in our life where we are not living up to how God wants us to live in certain areas. We allow ourselves to become influenced by the world at times. But when it comes to the way that we think, the Apostle Paul tells us that we must have our minds transformed. Our minds must be renewed day in and day out. And it comes through the Word of God. The way that you think about yourself, the way that you think about your life, the way that you think about your family, your friends, your job, whatever it is, God wants you to think rightly about those things. Because the way that you think will impact yourself and your outlook of your day, uh, your outlook of the day, and even your interactions with others. So the will of God for Christians is that our minds are, are continually being transformed day in and day out. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Beginning in verse 1. Paul says, If then you have been raised up with Christ, Keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Verse 2. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. So, let's get this straight. We are to think good thoughts. Philippians 4. Think thoughts that are worthy of praise. Good thoughts. Holy thoughts. Things that are godly. Things that God would approve of. Think of those thoughts. Romans chapter 12, we are to continually be renewing our mind, avoiding the world, not letting the world influence the way that we think. In chapter 3 of Colossians, he tells us to set our minds on the things which are above, not on the things that are on earth. It is so easy to become distracted by the things on this earth because we live here. We walk by faith, not by sight. We have not seen the heavenly things. We walk by faith and hope to see those in the future with a with a with a strong guarantee a strong assurance that we will see them one day because of what Christ has done for us the apostle paul tells us to set our mind on the things which are above this is something that we are commanded to do this is not something that just comes naturally this is not something that is just going to happen every single day the apostle paul again understands that it's easy to become worried about things what does paul say don't be anxious for anything. So today, if you are worried about something, I want you to remember Philippians chapter 4, 
When worry enters your heart, when worry enters your mind, when Satan's telling you, you should worry about this because you don't know what's going to happen, I want you to understand that God is in control. God is the king over all the nations of the earth. Period. God loves you. He is for you. He is with you. And there is nothing that's going to happen in your life today that has not already passed under his permissible will. Granted, we don't always understand why God lets things happen in our life, but we can trust that he is with us through everything that we experience each and every day. So if you're tempted to worry today, Apostle Paul says, do not be anxious. So you are to willfully you are to willfully confront these negative thoughts, fervently confront these negative thoughts with what God's word says. If you remember the, commu- the, the conversation between Jesus and Satan, how did that go down? Satan tempted Jesus every single time. And what did Jesus do? He quoted scripture. He fought back with scripture. The enemy was trying to get him to fall. But Jesus rested upon the word of God. It is written, it is written, it is written. That is how he fought against Satan. When you are tempted to think negative thoughts about anything, understand that God wants you to think about the thoughts that he approves. He wants you to think of of good thoughts, thoughts that are rooted within his word. Set your mind on the things which are above, not on the things that are on earth. If you're struggling today with remaining positive, rest assured that Jesus is with you. If you're struggling today with worrying about something in the future, maybe you have just been diagnosed with cancer, maybe you have been maybe you have a loved one who is on their deathbed, maybe You don't know what's going to happen with some certain family member, your child. Whatever it is, the future of this country, the future of public schooling, whatever. If you are a Christian, even if you're not a Christian, God would like you to think positive thoughts. And if you are not a Christian, I implore you today to come into the fold of God. Religion teaches that you must do things in order for God to love you, in order for God to keep you. Let me tell you something about that. The Mosaic Law, which you probably already know about, even if you're not a Christian, you probably know the Ten Commandments. There's actually 630 commandments. Yes, ten are important, but there's many more. So when someone comes up to you and tells you that you have to do things according to God's law in order to be saved, James chapter 2 actually tells us that if we fail in one area of the law, we've broken the whole thing. God expects 100% perfection in order to get right with Him. Now guess what? Here's the bad news. You can't do it. I can't do it. Because the Scriptures say, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is not one single person that will be justified in the sight of God by keeping the law of God. But here's the good news. Jesus died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again on the third day so that you could be justified before his Father. All you have to do is place your faith in Jesus Christ for that salvation. Some people call this cheap grace. Some people call this a license to sin. This is no license to sin at all, period. Actually, it is quite the opposite. Because we're saved, we should want to live for the Lord. We are to follow the Holy Spirit's leading and we are commanded to This is not a license to sin. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. If you believe upon Jesus Christ today for salvation, God says you will have eternal life. This is a life that's eternal, period. It cannot be taken away. God does not take it away from you on your bad days. God will not strip you of your inheritance that he gives you. Ephesians 1.13 says, Once we believe the gospel... We are sealed with the Holy Spirit. This is a sealing that is done by God. And our salvation comes by grace through faith apart from works. So your works, or lack of works, will not separate you from the love of God because your salvation is not based on works. It's based upon the finished work of Jesus 
Christ, he who knew no sin became sin for us, so that we may become the righteousness of Christ. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a pretty good deal to me. I know for certain that until I die, as a believer, as a child of God, as a pastor, as a husband, as a father, I am going to have my flaws. There are going to be days where I wake up thinking negative thoughts. But it is my responsibility as a Christian to rely on the Holy Spirit to get me through the day, to help me to think positive thoughts, because it is in Christ alone where I find my strength. And that is where you could find your strength as well. If you are addicted to drugs, if you are addicted to sex, if you are addicted to pornography, if you are addicted to anything that is ungodly, God can free you from that. And if you don't believe me, you're listening to someone who experienced that. No, I'm not perfect by any means. I still fall short. I still sin. We all do. But let me tell you something. God's grace is so wide and so big that it covers you completely. God loves you. He loves you more than any of your parents could love you. He loves you more than any of your family members could love you. He loves you with a perfect love. And once you are in the body of Christ, you are in, period. If you are having trouble thinking positive thoughts, if you are having trouble thinking about the promises of God or basing your thoughts upon the promises of God, I want to encourage you today and tell you that God is for you and He is not against you. If you have sinned today, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if you confess your sins, He is faithful and righteous enough to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The question is, do you believe that? If you're being weighed down for something you've done in the past, you think it's too big for God. If you confess your sins to Him, your your fellowship will be restored back to God because God forgives you. Some sins you we commit may seem too big to be forgivable. But if we begin thinking that way, the enemy has got to us because it shows that we do not truly understand the sufficiency of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. I hope this is an encouraging message to you today. There may be someone out there today who needed to hear this, and I hope they did. Because the way that we think matters, we do a lot of stinking thinking. We do a lot of negative thinking. And that is not God's will for us. So I pray that this blesses you. I pray that God's hand be upon your mind. And I pray that the Holy Spirit enables you to live for Him and to think positive thoughts. Because remember what the Apostle Paul says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Think upon good thoughts. Set your mind on the things which are above, not on the things that are on the earth. Transform your mind. Do not let your mind be influenced by the world. This will require discipline on your part. This will require prayer and help from the church, help from other believers, and help from God. But rest assured that each day we are in this together. All of us as a church family are in this together and we are to bear each other's burdens. So I pray that this has been a blessing to you, and I pray that you have a good, positive day.